एट मिड आफ्टरनून ऑफ अक्टूबर ट्वेंटी फिफ्थ ट्वेंटी फिफ्टीन जॉनिथर ड्राइवर फोन रैंग ही पिक इट अप एंड ऑन द अदर साइड वॉज इज यंगर सिस्टर एबी स्टेपिक हु साउंडेड डिस ओरिएंटेड एंड टोल्ड हिम डैश शी इज इन अर कार पार्कड आउटसाइड हिज होम ड्राइवर वेंट आउटसाइड बट एबी वॉज एंड देयर सो ही रीडाइल्ड हर नंबर एंड आस्ट एबी वेयर शी वॉज Abby again told him that she was in her car but she wasn't sure where her car was parked. I'm fucked up were the last words Trevor heard his sister say and then she hung up. This was the last time anyone heard from her. Born on March 31st 1997 Abby Jane Stepper was described as a girl with a contagious smile who was adored by her family and friends alike a smart and diligent student Abby was a senior at her high school and had dreams of one day becoming a cosmetologist and a real estate agent Abby loved learning new languages and was studying Spanish and Turkish and on top of that She was also learning Hebrew with her grandmother. Sometime during early 2015, Abby started working as a footlocker at McCain Mall, and according to her parents, this was the pivoting point in her life as after this her behavior completely changed. Abby moved out of her parents' house and suddenly switched her high school and her focus on academic had diminished to such extent that her parents were now receiving calls from Little Rock Central High School informing them that their daughter was a truant according to her family this new version of Esther as they often called her was unrecognizable to them she was now a completely different person on the evening of 23rd October 2015 Abby who now lived at one of her former schoolmate and closest friend Danielle's home went to a party but when she came back from it she told her friends and family that while she was there she was sexually assaulted by four individuals who had videotaped the traumatizing event she told her stepfather Michael Jernigan that she wants to report it to police and asked him to go with her the two decided that they would meet later that day and lodge a report to the police abby then went to her grandparents house and at around 8 pm that night she told her grandparents that she is going to meet with her stepfather and asked her grandmother peggy not to lock the door as she will return soon but she never did back at home michael and lori jernigan were calling her at her phone but she didn't answer any of their calls abby parents believe abby went to retrieve the videotape of her sexual assault next day on 25th october abby called her brother trevor and told him that she was in her car parked outside his home but when he went outside she wasn't there he called her back and asked where she was abby insisted that she was in her car but wasn't sure about the whereabouts i'm fucked up said abby to her brother and hung up and after this her family had lost all contact with her they became worried about her safety and contacted friends including daniel but no one had any idea where abby was abby's family tried to report her disappearance but were told to wait as it hadn't been 12 hours since she went missing and police couldn't do anything until then on 28th of october a guard at chelamont park which is located in west of little rock found an abandoned car and reported it to the authorities but for two days no one showed up on 30th october the car was finally determined to be abby's who by now was considered a missing person the car's gas tank was empty and the keys were still in ignition leading to its battery being flat the initial investigation into abby's disappearance was shoddy with police believing that she was a runaway 
The men Abby accused of sexual assault were interviewed, but police didn't search their phones, even though phone records show that before she went missing, she had sent text messages to these men, threatening to report them to the police. Citing lack of resources, authorities refused to ping Abby's cell phone location. Evidence in Abby's car was also mishandled. This behavior by authorities was emotionally draining for Abby's family, and with no hope left in local police, Abby's mother Lori wrote a letter to the governor and urged him to help find her daughter. Months after Abby's disappearance, FBI voluntarily got involved and started an investigation of their own. Abby's friends and family tried everything they could. They hired private investigators, left messages on her phone, posted missing person notices throughout the city, and even offered a reward of $50,000. But all of these efforts yielded nothing, and for a long time, nothing substantial came in, until one day, a discovery changed everything. On May 24, 2018, police along with the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children conducted a search of the Chalamount Park and discovered the skeletal remains of a human in a drainage pipe. The pipe was in the immediate vicinity where Abby Jane's car was found two and a half years earlier, and authorities were certain that the remains were those of Abby, and a subsequent report from Arkansas State Crime Lab confirmed it. Authorities refused to comment on the cause of death, but the case was now being investigated as a homicide. At the time, police interviewed several people, but no one was named as a credible suspect. There were speculations about Abby ending her own life, which her family vehemently denied as it isn't possible for a person to crawl into the drainage pipe where her remains were found. Detective Hudson, who helped find her body, believes that the day she died, someone was there with her. Hudson thinks that Abby knew this person and that this person is the one who killed her and then put her body into the drainage point. He is sure that Abby's case will soon be solved and whoever this unknown person is will be brought to justice. Ever since Abby went missing, her family has been living a never-ending nightmare, and the person most tormented by this was her brother Trevor, who was the last person to talk with her. For years, he kept on searching for her but when the news of her death came, it took a toll on his heart, and in 2019, Trevor passed away due to a heart attack. Investigation into her case is still open, and her family wants Abby's killer to be brought to justice. If you have any information which can be helpful to solve this case, we urge you to contact Little Rock Police Department. Thanks for being here. If you like this type of content, please like this video and leave a comment behind. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed so you never gonna miss any of our future uploads. Stay tuned, stay curious.